Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about this upcoming battle for the welterweight championship between unbeaten Mini Tyson, Selkuk Aiden, and he's fighting Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Now let me just say, this is part of the non-mainstream media world, right? Here online on the internet, myself and the several other people on YouTube who talk about boxing aren't in the same position that mainstream media commentators are. Right? We're not employed by a cable station, even a good cable station, that has contractual deals either with the fighters or with their promotional companies. Right? This isn't 24-7. I'm not trying to placate any fighter nor talk up any fighter here because I'm not trying to get any fighter interviews. Right here online, we don't face some of the pressures that some of the mainstream commentators face. So I'm going to name some fighters who are overrated right now, right? Some of them are big names. Some may be among the best fighters in boxing. One of these guys I actually have listed on DeWireTop10Boxing.blogspot.com. But at the same time, I believe the public is overvaluing this guy's actual talents. I'm not claiming that he hasn't fought quality opposition, right? Let's, let's go through some overrated fighters. Then we'll go through some underrated fighters, right? The first overrated fighter is current heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko. I know there are a lot of people out there who will talk about Vladimir Klitschko as if he is the best heavyweight today and as if he belongs in the sentence with the great heavyweights in history, the Joe Lewis's, the uh, Ali's, etc. Right? I don't believe Vladimir Klitschko is the best heavyweight in his family. And my point is simply when you look at his skills and when you ask yourself how well does he fight inside, you know, the question really has to be asked does he fight inside or is he just trying to? lean on guys when they get inside, right? Has he been revealed to be someone whose chin is not spectacular, someone who has been knocked out in fights, someone who quite frankly, curiously, completely ran out of gas in the middle of a fight against Lehman Brewster, right? Well, continuing on that over rated list and I'm not saying these guys aren't world-class fighters all I'm saying is we may think of them a little bit more highly than their skill set suggests um, another is Miguel Cotto as I make this video the Mayweather Cotto fight hasn't happened yet but all I can say is you know when I watch Miguel Cotto I know he backs up at times in fights I don't see him fighting while he's backing up right that Antonio Margarito fight stopped a little bit too early for my taste. He did bang up Margarito's eye, no question about it, but in a rematch of a fight where he himself got stopped. You know, one wonders why the judges didn't allow that, you know, 11th and 12th rounds to take place. I think Cotto is a one-handed left hooker masquerading as a guy who boxes, right? I don't care who his trainer is, whether it's Emmanuel Stewart or whether it's his current trainer. Um, the problem is if you don't have a potent right hand, then there's only so much you could do with that left hook. As another overrated fighter found out this last weekend, Brandon Rios, who I thought got completely undressed and exposed by Richard Abril. Another fighter who I would consider overrated, James Kirkland. So much so that I went online here before his fight against Carlos Molina and said that I didn't see how Kirkland could 
outbox Carlos Molina. And let me just say, Kirkland didn't come close. He's lucky that uh, the referee stopped that fight, in my opinion, prematurely. Right? Also, Andre Berto. You know, Berto's a warrior. I'm not saying he hasn't been in the ring with real opposition. Uh, Zavek, uh, Quintana, um, they're real. Right? The problem is, you know, there's a reason why he tends to fight predominantly left-handed fighters. Um, I've looked at Berto fights where he has explosive power, but has been outboxed for stretches of that fight. I'm sure the fans of Luis Colazo are still asking themselves whether or not Colazo actually lost that fight. Now, let's talk about undervalued guys in boxing. These are guys who, for whatever reason, are on the side of the street of guys who, whatever they do in the ring, might be style, might be personality, we tend to undervalue them. Right, Carlos Molina? Let's face it, that first Chavez Jr. fight, he beat Chavez Jr. Come on, can we be honest? Um, Erislan de Lara knows he's lucky to have left the ring with a draw in that fight. Right, James Kirkland knows he was getting beaten. In fact, his trainer, Ann Wolf, right after the incident at the end, grabs Molina in the ring and tells Molina that on her card, Molina was winning the fight. Right, Camito Moreno... He's on my list as the best pound for pound in the sport. If you want to see great counter punching, great movement, um, you know, from the waist up, great bending, um, a total technician, this guy who is a champion, who has made many defenses of his title and who, for whatever reason, is still under the radar, this guy's one of the best in the sport talent wise. Also, and I know the people in the UK are going to disagree with me, and I know I'll also get another group that says, isn't this guy actually overrated? But I would argue that Lucien Boutte is actually underrated. We'll see what happens when he faces Carl Frotch. I think what we're going to learn is that Carl Frotch will be the second best guy in that fight in terms of going to the body. Boutte is a great body puncher. Boutte, quite frankly, is a master at keeping distance, and he's a great southpaw. Speaking of southpaws, people here know what I think of Chad Dawson. I think he's one of the top five talents in the sport. I think he belongs on any underrated list because he, quite frankly, belongs on any top ten pound-for-pound -pound list. And lightweight champion, I've been um, talking up this guy for a while, and all this guy continues to do is flash one of the best jabs in boxing with one of the best cadences in boxing. His timing is impeccable. That's the lightweight champion, Miguel Vasquez. Well, let me say, despite his success in the past, and I know I've taken eight and a half minutes to get here, one of the best fighters in the sport, and he's underrated, is Robert Guerrero. He's so good that I don't believe he's fought at 147 pounds. And yet I am picking him in this fight to beat unbeaten Selkuk Aiden. Let's talk about both fighters. I like Guerrero in this one. Right now, Aiden likes to bend at the waist. He's what I call a mid-range hooker. But he has a passive defense. When you throw, he doesn't throw back. Jojo Dan lost the rematch against him after I thought beating him in the first fight. That's another story. But Jojo Dan lost the rematch with him. Dan threw a lot of punches but didn't exhibit the kind of movement in the ring that Robert Guerrero is going to exhibit. Right? Aiden throws a big punch and then he tries to come in behind it. He's kind of like Andre Berto in that sense. Aiden is a legitimate world-class fighter. I'm not saying he's overrated at all, right? What I am saying, though, is he's in the ring here with a better talent. Guerrero is a rough combination. 
He's a southpaw who throws a beautiful jab and who, like Vitaly Klitschko, knows how to use length, but he couples it with movement, right? He's very accurate with that jab. He can throw combinations that include hard body shots, right? Now, while he's jumping two weight classes, he's actually taller than Aiden, and he controls distance so well, I think that's a bonus for him, just like Vitaly Klitschko's height is a bonus for him. To put it in perspective, Guerrero was one of the first guys to undress Michael Casitas, right? Casitas is aggressive in coming inside. He had a very hard time coming inside on Robert Guerrero, right? Now, let me just say this. Guerrero has fought other complicated opponents. He fought and beat Joel Casamayor. Now, I know people are going to say, hey, Casamayor at the end, what did he have? My point to you is Casamayor, even toward the end, continued to fight world-class fighters. He is as slick as slick gets. He's a difficult matchup. And Guerrero completely spanked him. Also, Vincente Escovito, he's an underrated fighter. And in a classic matchup, Guerrero beat him. Guerrero has a nice, quick uppercut. In fact, he scored a knockdown of Escovito with one. Now, it's true. And this is why you have to hedge the play. It's true that Guerrero might have some possible chin problems. He got dropped by Casamayor, but understand, Casamayor is such a big punch, he also dropped Casitas when Casitas was unbeaten, right? He got dazed by Michael Casitas, right? He sometimes is vulnerable to getting hit when he opens up. Let me also point out that the blueprint is out on how to beat Robert Guerrero. Just take a look at the Orlando Salido fight, but understand, Salido is a world-class fighter. He's the guy who just beat um, Juan Manuel Lopez, Juan Ma, for the second time, right? The way to beat Guerrero is with volume, hooks, and angles, right? You got a glimpse of that when he fought an aborted fight against Dowd Jordan. Right? Volume, hooks, you really have to be high volume. You really have to be prepared to come at Guerrero and not give Guerrero a chance to reset. I don't believe that Selkuk Aiden, who hits very hard, I don't believe that he throws the volume or works the angles to beat a technician like Guerrero. The play I'm recommending here is Guerrero to win the fight. He can do it one of two ways. Guerrero packs a punch. He might get a stoppage. He might get a decision. I'm not sure. But you need to hedge the play with Aiden by KO. Right? Because Selkuk Aiden is one of these very heavy-handed guys who always has a puncher's chance in whatever fight he's in, right? And here, he's fighting a guy who doesn't have experience at 147 pounds. To sum up, I fully expect Robert Guerrero to win the 147-pound title. Let me go one step further. Let's get controversial 14-odd minutes into this video. You know, Robert Guerrero is so skilled in my eyes that if he were to face... Juan Manuel Marquez, who ducked him, right? Every fighter has fighters they didn't want to face. Do the homework. You'll see Guerrero was actually a mandatory for Marquez. If he were to face Juan Manuel Marquez, I'd take Guerrero. If Guerrero were to face Manny Pacquiao, you know, that's an intriguing fight. That's a very intriguing fight. I think that fight's a toss-up. Guerrero against Floyd Mayweather, and I'm naming the biggest names here. Ooh, you know what? I'd have to see the odds before I made a call on that one. 
right? That too is an intriguing fight. You're talking about an elite talent who has had to take some time off at different times in his career to tend to a family member, right? Who's having some health problems. But make no mistake, Guerrero is an elite talent. Dare I say he's one of the very best in, we'll call it, his area code, right? That 140 to 147 area, right? I'd take Guerrero, quite frankly, over Andre Berto, who has a belt at 147 pounds. I think this guy's an elite talent. I think this is his coming out party. I like Guerrero to beat Selkuk Aiden, straddled against Aiden by KO. Let's always do a KO straddle when you're dealing with a guy who has one punch knockout power. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.